Okay, so I'm going to work the uh, 1 8 inch uh, MIP inside of that uh, to thread it. Um, had I had a, a, a tap system, uh, it, would have, it would be helpful to create the threads within the plastic. Um, if not, you can carefully uh, force thread it. It will work, uh, but if you strip it, it's going to ruin it. Uh, and of course, the focus here as you start threading it ultimately will be to get it far enough in. Um, of course, after you add the Teflon tape, then it'll completely seal off uh, the system down here. So in the end, you wouldn't have to worry about reinserting um, a rubber grommet here or even having uh, the old canisters in place because it'll self-seal um, if needed. Use a, a set of grips here and just uh, carefully, you can see I've already stripped some of the metal a little bit just because it's been slipping, but just carefully work work it in a uh, little bit at a time and uh, you'll thread it and it'll skin itself. Thread the Teflon tape, just the technique that I use. If I start on the top, uh, hold it in place and then just rotate the threads to the right as you rotate the threads. This is the end of the tape now facing towards the camera. As I rotate in, it won't bind up. So we're going to go ahead and get that started. You'll start to see the Teflon coming through. We've now actually got all the way. And actually, if you leave, as I was going in, if you left that last thread open, you could actually see if you've completely sealed the opening inside. Because uh, if all you see is Teflon with no brass threads left open, uh, you know you're going to at least have closed off this bottom. Done the same technique uh, to the other side, uh, placing the Teflon tape on and wrapping clockwise. Uh, much the same way, so as I rotate on, it won't uh, bind up. I'll leave a little bit of room, that way as I try to tighten both these up, uh, it'll finish tightening on the inside as well as seat on, on the sides. Finished tefloning um, the last eighth, in, eighth portion over here. This ring is tightened up. As you look inside, you would notice that the threads have made it all the way through. I've set up the angle so I'm sitting perpendicular uh, to, the, to the rest of the bottle. All right, so we've now added our 90 degree uh, eighth inch male iron pipe bend, um, tacked on the additional quarter inch uh, for eighth inch reducer male iron pipe, which has all been Teflon taped, and we'll finally add on the quarter inch um, air compressor adapter, quick connector, I should say. All right, from the kit, I've removed uh, our pressure regulator, which already comes with one quick connect fitting. Uh, the hose itself, which will have the other quick connect that will actually mount to our device. Um, and we'll unwrap the air cylinder. Uh, pretty straightforward air cylinder will just get threaded in and mounted. This will handle both a, a 9 ounce, 12 ounce, and up to 20 ounce uh, without any modifications to the fittings. Okay, so I'm set up here, uh, made my quick connect fitting uh, to both sides, to the regulator. Uh, before I lock down the bottle, you want to go ahead and make sure that you turn your uh, regulator valve as far to the left counterclockwise. That'll make sure it's uh, actually in the, in the off position. As you rotate right, you'll start to uh, increase the, the pressure. Uh, certainly, if you overpressurize them, the container will explode. Uh, it'll find the weakest point and crack it, so you want to start off slow with that. So here's a first look at a completed assembly of the home brew dispensing system using a cobalt regulator courtesy of our Lowe's friends with a 20 ounce tank, uh, a little bit of plumbing hardware mounted in place. Now as I rotate I'm hearing bubbles going on the inside, but I'm also hearing uh, some leak on the bottom. So I'm going to shut off the air. What we're going to do is take a look at the uh, original CO2 dispensing system.
Uh, here's his rubber grommet. We're going to be able to stick that back up inside and even keep the same cartridge that has already been punctured and used. Um, I'd say you're just going to slide this over the top. That's where it's going to seat and that's going to fit up inside. Uh, and that should create the seal in the opening that we were looking at earlier. Uh, but to make sure that we don't, we don't have to worry about the fins, I'm just going to take a look at the side where the fins sit. You can, by hand even, peel them off. Um, if, it's, if they're a little tough, they didn't break the first time, take yourself a pair of pliers or a needle nose and just work them off. Alright, this is the completed system. Uh, modified home brew tank with a little uh, plumbing hardware to fit to a standard quick connect regulator. I uh, made a small ad adjustment by rotating the entire thread to a slightly backward angle. As you'll see uh, we'll still be able to utilize the base system that came with the keg. Uh, still have access to be able to connect our quick connect and uh, we'll start pressurizing it. Okay, for all. Uh, so without things being connected or, or basically leaving it in an open state, uh, so before this seals up, uh, what you can do is set this thing up and start rotating your valve and finding where the zero point is. Uh, so roughly, uh, I found that this spot here you know, puts it in an off position. As I rotate past it, I'm hearing the air start to flow inside. And what I did is I found at about a quarter turn, that'll bring my pressure up to roughly 10 PSI. Here it's pressurizing up, bottle's getting nice and firm, and my pressure now has made it to 10 PSI. My purpose of the system is to fill this with, carb with already carbonated uh, beverage from my uh, main system. Uh, so I will only be using this to essentially push out the beer. So I need a slight pressure uh, to really cause this to work. And as you see, there we go. Our home function, our functioning modified system. If you hold it in this position, uh, where the stem is in the air only, it's a good opportunity to pressurize your system to clear out any oxygen, um, allowing only carbon dioxide to reside inside. So if I open up, so if I hold it in this position. And opening the valve up, a little bit of water will clear out. You'll see carbon dioxide now freely bubbling on the inside. Uh, this is an, a great way to clear out the oxygen, uh, forcing just carbon, carbon dioxide on the inside. If I let that run for a little bit, um, it'll reduce the amount of oxidation that could occur if this keg system was to be uh, storing your homebrew for an extended period of time. And that is a fully functional, portable homebrew delivery system.